So I've been, um, for a while I was looking forward to um, reading The Prisoner by Marcel Proust. Um, Proust is one of my favorite authors, grown on me. And uh, The Prisoner is like the fifth or sixth book. Uh, it is actually one of my favorites. There was a new translation that um, didn't come out for like a decade and finally came out. Um, I got maybe 80 pages in and I got a head cold and I, I just couldn't deal with Proust's rambling. I couldn't, I couldn't just couldn't do it. So anyway, I picked up uh, Ravelstein by Saul Bellow, just for kind of randomly. Um, and he's kind of an interesting guy, like he wrote in the 50s, 60s, 70s, like won the Nobel Prize, won all these awards. Um, really big deal, he was successful, made all sorts of money. Now no one talks about him. At the time, he was like a runner-up for have written one of the great American novels. He wrote um, uh, The Adventures of Augie March. Um, anyway, the book that I read was actually his last book. came out in 2001. He just recently died, maybe 10 years ago or something. And it's Ravelstein. And it's sort of um, like a fictionalized um, version of his real life. Uh, all that you can tell, all the characters are real people. Um, the main um, the main character that Ravelstein is talking to is like a fictionalized version of Saul Bellow. And um, Ravelstein is this larger than life character. Um, it's an old, like an older man brilliant, uh, brilliant professor, um, and he, uh, um, had a really extra, extra, extravagant, uh, lifestyle, he, like, always had to have the fine, finest things, always had to, um, like, travel in luxury, live in the best of homes, eat out, tremendously in debt, had to borrow money from everybody, and finally he decides that he's just going to like write a book, uh, Ravelstein, huge success, becomes like a millionaire, and he can keep spending money like it's water, and uh, when, when the book takes place, it's at the end of his life, he, he's um, uh, sort of like in the evening of his years. And uh, Saul Bellow, uh, the, the character Saul Bellow, uh, is a friend of his, and he's a little bit younger. They're both kind of old, but um, and they have these uh, conversations, like they're like these philosophical, interesting. Andy, Andy, good boy, it's a cat. Um, these interesting conversations, and the book is great. It's just like the perfect book if you were like a pseudo intellectual. Um, it might be a great book if you're a real intellectual. I just wouldn't know that. <laughs> um, but he's he's a name dropper. Saul Bellow, the the author. Um, these characters. Um, so like Ravelstein's a like a um, kind of like a, a arts professor of philosophy, literature, and you can't help to name, like, every, um, everybody. So they're talking about the Greeks, you know, you're hearing about Socrates and Plato, Herodotus and Thucydides, Euripides, Sophocles, um, Heraclitus. Then, you know, if they're talking about Rome, they name all the Romans that you can name, um, you know, France, they name Voltaire, Diderot, Rousseau, and on and on and on. Every every page is like um, naming all these people, um, and it's just sort of fun to read. Like, um, you know, it, early on in the book, they quote uh, Ravelstein uh, quotes Yeats, and he doesn't mention that he's quoting Yeats. But I, you know, I, I, the the quote was um, 
the, these mackerel crowded seas. And I'm reading it and go, oh, that's from sailing to Byzantium. And it's kind of fun to know. Andy. Um, the other cool bit is he mentions these people. So he'll, you know, he'll go, uh, Thomas Hobbes. I've never read Thomas Hobbes, but I, I know the name, and it's enough for me to get like a little buzz, like, oh, well, I'm smart enough to know who Thomas Hobbes is. Um, good boy. Um, you know, he'll mention Machiavelli, but he won't mention, you know, he'll, he'll mention the prince, but um, he'll mention Machiavelli and mention... Um, you know, then go on to talk about the discourses of uh, Livy. Um, I don't know if I got that right, but the discourses. So I've read The Prince, but I've never read the discourses. But I can sit there and go, well, I know that, you know, people, other people read the discourses. And so that's good enough. And you get, it's kind of fun. It's like the equivalent of the end of watching Jeopardy where you get tons of facts and at the end of it you kind of feel smarter uh, because of all the information that you've gotten without actually learning anything. Um, a friend of mine made kind of a, a humorous uh, observation which I think is uh, worth uh, repeating um, but noting um, the similarities to Malcolm Gladwell's books. So Malcolm Gladwell is a great fun to read and he like throws out all these facts and they're all kind of unrelated and there's tons of them um, and he's drawing all these points and the books are uh, Malcolm Gladwell real fast paced, it's enjoyable um, and at the end you feel like you really like grasped something but at least for me anyway if you try like explaining one of Malcolm Gladwell's points, you get like really confused. It's like, well, you see, <clears throat> ice cream scoopers are like um, selling sneakers. Um, it's a it's a it's a tipping point, is what it is. Um, see these popsicle sticks. Um, is uh, it's it's a David and Goliath story, you know, and on and on and on. Um, and I really got the same kind of feeling with um, uh, Ravelstein. Just uh, all sorts of fun names. You kind of know some of them. You don't know other ones. And um, you know, if if you're kind of interested in, in that world, it's um, just like a who's who. You could read it as a gossip. I don't know if I mentioned it, but Ravelstein has AIDS and he dies. Um, and um, the plot of the book is um, Ravelstein's asking Saul Bellow to write his story. He goes, I have all this stuff to say and I want you to write the story. And the, it's um, kind of meta, it's like a, a meta book because you're reading the book that Ravelstein was asking him to write. Um, and the last third is sort of when it turns into like an elegy. Like, you know, you really get a feeling of a long friendship. Um, there's a lot of discussions about death what it means when a friend dies, how, um, how you digest that. Um, in a lot of ways, it was the, um, the most boring part of the book because Ravelstein was like the interesting uh, character. Um, um, but it's the most profound, like it's the most probably the most re-readable part. Um, so
So um, I'm still hoping uh, to get back into the prisoner, uh, but it was a fun little break. Um, so I'm kind of on to reading other things. Um, I'll have more reviews coming out if you want to comment. 